Welcome to the first day of five-day web services programming code camp from jpassion.com. Uh, my name is Sang Shin. I'm the founder and chief instructor of jpassion.com, uh, which used to be called javapassion.com. So if you logged in with your ping membership, uh, you are going to see the contents that we are going to cover in this five-day period. Okay. So today we are going to mostly focus on XML. So my goal today is to cover a web services overview, which is a pretty uh, small set of slides, uh, just talking about the concept of web services. And the rest of the presentation will focus on XML. So we will start with the namespace and schema basics. Uh, we'll skip uh, schema advanced. So we are going to actually do namespace, uh, schema basics, and XPath and XSLT. And uh, as most of you probably are well aware, each of these topics have hands-on lab. And uh, uh, the, uh, the lab uh, will give you a sense of how you can actually understand. I mean, it will actually help you to understand the concept of these things. OK, so let's start with the web services overview presentation. So here we are going to talk about what web services is and why you want to use web services and uh, where are we and where are we going in terms of usage of web services and types of web services, uh, SOAP-based web services and RESTful-based web services. Those are the topics that, those are the types of web services uh, you can deploy and access. And we are going to actually cover both in this, uh, in this code camp. And web services support over Java platform. So what is a web service? This is the definition of web service by W3C. So web service is a software application identified by URI. So web services should be addressable by URI. Whose interfaces and bindings are capable of being defined, described, and discovered by XML artifacts. So everything is XML based in uh, web services and uh, of course JSON and uh, things like that are becoming more important when you're using RESTful web services. Uh, when this definition is made by W3C, they are mostly focused on SOAP-based web services. Uh, the supports direct interaction with other software applications. As we are going to see later on, web services great technology when uh, software is supposed to communicate with another software. Uh, instead of human talking to uh, backend software. Uh, using XML-based messages. So messages are being changed through XML and uh, via internet-based protocols. So this definition does not actually include uh, the, uh, the, the sum of the characteristics of restful-based web, restful web services, which is becoming more important. Uh, if you see the distributed computing uh, evolution, in the beginning there was a client, server, and uh, technology. Uh, these are mostly silos, uh, meaning they are not really communicating each other. Uh, then we actually moved on to web-based computing, uh, where uh, some of the clients are talking to backend servers, which, which we still use. And then the next evolution is web services and peer-to-peer -peer computing, where a bunch of clients are communicating with a bunch of servers through uh, messaging, through sending and receiving messages. So if you compare client-server technology against the web services, uh, traditional client-server technology is typically used within the enterprise. However, web services could be used both within the enterprise and outside. Uh, the enterprise. And in traditional client server technology, they are tied to a set of programming technology programming languages. Uh, one of the advantages of using web services is programming language independent. Uh, as long as client server are communicating through sending soap based web uh, soap based messages uh, or the uh, the uh, uh, RESTful based web uh, messages, uh, they should be able to communicate regardless of what programming language is being used uh, the, uh, on that endpoint. Uh, in traditional client server, it's more or less procedural. Uh, however, in web services, it's message driven, meaning the communication is done through the sending and receiving messages. 
uh, in traditional client server usually bound to a particular transport uh, however in web services they could actually use a different transport and of course the most pervasive form of transport that is being used even in web services is HTTP but web services designed to be used over different transport protocols such as SMTP or JMS and things like that and traditional client server is tightly coupled uh, the uh, between client and server However, in web services, they are loosely coupled. Uh, in fact, client server does not know how, neither uh, the how each end they are communicating to is implemented. Uh, they just send messages and expect the responses. Uh, the web services is relatively not efficient processing compared to traditional client server technology because uh, in the SOAP-based messaging especially, uh, the marshalling and marshalling from, for example, Java objects to XML and XML to Java needs to be done and that actually costs some uh, overhead. Now, if you compare web application against web services, uh, web applications are typically uh, reflecting uh, user to program interaction while web services uh, is uh, program to program interaction. Uh, web application is static integration of components, but web services, there is a possibility of dynamic integration of components. Uh, this doesn't happen yet. Uh, you know, web services are still uh, statically integrated uh, the, at the moment, um, but the possibility of dynamic integration of components uh, is, is, is there. Uh, web application is more or less monolithic service. Uh, in web services, however, possibility of service aggregation again is a possibility. So we'll talk about this dynamic integration of components and uh, possibility of service, integra uh, service aggregation in the following slide. So characteristics of web services is XML based everywhere and is message based and is programming language independent and can be dynamically located. Uh, even though the uh, the uh, uh, the location is still pretty much static in pretty much all implementations out there, and could be dynamically assembled and ag aggregated. Yes. Yeah, so again, this is actually for the future, uh, and access over the internet and loosely coupled and based on industry standard. So. This is actually a picture where web services could be deployed and used and discovered, uh, discovered and used. So there could be something like a service registry. So this registry will actually maintain information about all the services, web services. So the clients at the bottom might actually talk to service registry to find out information about the service and uh, then it will actually find the service and then it will actually invoke the service. Okay. So these services might register, uh, they should actually register uh, to service registry if they want to take advantage of this service discovery feature. But these days, uh, in the long time ago, you know, there was actually a concept of UDDI, which actually plays the role of service registry, but uh, UDDI is rarely used these days. Okay. So basically, client knows where to actually find a service through different means, for example, uh, is posted some website and things like that and uh, then they get the WSDL document and they should be able to text invoke. Okay? So basically uh, the, these days uh, the uh, uh, service invocation uh, is pretty much the only thing that you will find. Uh, service aggregation. So a service could be actually macro service which is made of microservices. Okay, so as far as a client is concerned, a client will actually use macroservice and behind the scene macroservice could actually talk to other uh, microservices. So they could aggregate these microservices to reflect uh, the service to its clients. So this is a service aggregation and this service aggregation could be done uh, statically or dynamically. Uh, again, uh, at the moment it is pretty much a static uh, aggregation, but in the future it could be uh, dynamically aggregated during one time. So uh, service aggregation examples. So suppose if you provide stock service portal uh, and that uh, this is the user talking to client, talking to your service pro portal, and that uh, the service portal could actually communicate with a bunch of other uh, services, microservices, to get the information. So it might talk to NASDAQ, it might talk to newsfeed, it might talk to brokerage houses, and uh, through the web services, then they collect the information and then expose uh, unified service to its client. 
So why you want to use web service? Web services are platform neutral, so you don't really care whether it is implemented or deployed on a particular platform or not. Okay? Uh, web services are accessible in a standard way, so the communication is done through the standardized communication model, uh, such as SOAP or REST. Uh, they are accessible in an interoperable fashion, so the one reason why you want to use web services is because of interoperability. Uh, without using web services, client server has to be tied up uh, together. Uh, they might have to use the same operating system. They might have to use the same programming language. They might have to use the same object model. However, in web services, those constraints are gone. So basically, as long as they actually communicate by sending and receiving SOAP messages, they should be able to interoperate. So one of the uh, biggest uh, benefits of using web services, in fact, motivation of using web services interoperability. Uh, it, use, it, it uses a simple and ubiquitous plumbing, meaning SOAP or REST. It simplifies enterprise integration because of uh, the loosely coupled communication model, meaning it doesn't get constrained by operating system, it doesn't get constrained by the programming language, it doesn't get constrained by object model. So this is a summary. This is the summary of what we just talked about. It provides interoperability, so connect across heterogeneous networks using ubiquitous web-based standards. It's economical. Uh, it could be actually recycling components. So basically, if you happen to have uh, some kind of business logic impo uh, implemented in, let's say, mainframe, uh, one way to expose that business logic to external clients is actually wrapping up as uh, web services. Okay? So it provides economy of recycling uh, existing component, business components and no installation and tight integration of software are required. It's accessible, so this is what I just talked about, uh, legacy assets or internal applications could be exposed as web services. Uh, it's available services on any device, anywhere, anytime, meaning as long as they send and receive uh, messages and they should be able to communicate. Scalable, no limits on scope of applications and amounts of heterogeneous applications. Okay, so state of web services. So basic technology and standards are well established. And for example, SOAP and WSDL has been around almost 10 years. And then high level uh, standards such as a security standard, transaction standard, uh, state management standard, and context management standard, these kind of you know, identity management standards. So these kind of standards have been established. And there are uh, abundant implementations out there. Uh, pretty much all Java EE servers or .NET uh, platform support uh, web services. Uh, business web services are the next big thing, but more works are needed. Uh, for example, quality of service and management, provisioning, and accounting, these kind of things are still need to be ironed out uh, or established in production environment. Uh, SOA is becoming a reality. Uh, so, uh, you know, SOA uh, provides uh, the uh, flexible means of integrating enterprise applications. The impact of web services on software. So, if you think about the uh, monolithic software, they are made of system software, and then on the top of the system software, you could have enterprise application. Now, the uh, the uh, both the system software and enterprise applications are made of a bunch of software components. And the web services could actually uh, expose uh, these business logic components or system services components as uh, the independent uh, web services. So it could uh, disintegrate monolith monolithic software into component-based uh, application software in which uh, components could be actually accessed uh, by the uh, clients. Okay, so types of web services. As I mentioned before, there are two main kinds, um, two types of web services. One is SOAP-based web services. It's based on SOAP, WSDL, and WebStart, WebStart specification. And uh, then there is a second kind, which is called the RESTful based web services. And uh, recently, RESTful based web services, <coughs> excuse me, gaining more, <coughs> excuse me, let me just drink some water. <coughs> it's gaining more traction these days over SOAP based web services due to its simplicity. And we are going to cover both uh, types of web services in this course. Uh, web services support over Java platform. 
So uh, web services are just one of the many service delivery channels of Java EE. So, uh, you know, whatever business logic, you could actually expose it as a web application or you could expose it as a web services. Uh, there is no real architectural changes needed and existing Java EE components can be easily exposed as web services. In fact, existing Java EE business logic could be exposed as both uh, the uh, EJB or servlet endpoint or web services endpoint. Uh, the reason you might want to actually use Java EE as a platform of choice for deploying, uh, building and deploying your web services is because it's proven platform in terms of portability and scalability and reliability, and there is no single vendor lock-in. So where are we now in terms of uh, the uh, web services support? So Java APIs for web services are well uh, the accepted. So JAX Web Services, that's for SOAP-based web services, and JAX RS, that's for uh, RESTful-based web services, and JAX B is for data binding, uh, marshalling between XML and Java object. And tools are available now for exposing existing Java E components web services and building and deploying web services over Java E platform. And the Java E community has defined overall framework for web services as part of the Java E 1.4, which was released uh, seven or eight years ago. So uh, web services support over Java EE has been around for quite a while. Uh, Java SE 6 can also host web services because Java, e, Java SE 6 comes with its own HTTP server. So you don't have to actually use uh, the Java EE container to deploy your web services. Uh, if you want to actually deploy your web services in a light fat, lightweight uh, manner, then you can use just Java SE. Uh, web services components. So here uh, you can think of this is the uh, you know, Java EE platform, so uh, web services could be a servlet endpoint or EJB endpoint, okay. or it could be Java SE endpoint. All right, so that is the end of the presentation. So this goal of the, uh, this presentation is just to give you a sense of what web service is all about. Okay. So this is more or less concept, and we are going to move on to uh, the uh, 